What's up everybody, Drew here. This video was a recording from a class that we held uh, for the mentor group chat that we have for Photo Booth 101. So today Hans is going over Luma Booth, how to do the template, how to do an overlay for the other experiences. I'm talking GIF, Boomerang, even video, you can apply it. And then also he goes through and shows you guys how he makes an AI background removal file for Luma Booth. So before we get into it, you guys, as always, if you want to join the mentor group chat, it's $1.99 lifetime access. You just pay $1.99 once, then you get access to the chat. We do calls like this every so often, monthly giveaways. And also, if you're interested in Luma Booth, we have a sign up code. So that'll be down below. You sign up, uh, buy your account for the year, the subscription. Uh, right now, it's on sale for uh, $194.99. Then, once you do that, email me, uh, photobooth101 info at gmail i will send you access to the group chat for the software so that's down below enough yapping let's get to the video thank you guys let's get it going now we're going to do four by six slides uh for this example so to you guys have uh familiarity with canva if not when we want to uh create a template um we generally end uh the uh photo booth business we either go two by six or six by four or vice versa, six by two, six by four, four by six, whatever you want to call it. But this is where I start. I create a design and do custom design. So here, make sure you guys click inches. We're going to do a width of six and a height of four. And we're going to do a four by six for the customer. We're just assuming we're going to do a four by six to the customer right now. All right. Um, what I like about Canva is sometimes it has um, templates already kind of made for you guys sometimes. It's it's really, really, really cool. So what I like doing is going to designs. And since this is uh, a class, let's just put classroom. See if uh, we could find a themed classroom design. No? Okay. How about school? Cool. So we're going to go with this template right here. And boom, you know, um, Canva already had a, a template made for us. So we're just waiting for it to load well. Boom, boom, boom. It's loading. Cool. So now we got to that. Any questions on that? how I got that to this part re real quick? No? All right. If you guys need to, need to stop me, uh, speak up. All right. All right. So we're, I'm just going to start erasing what I don't need. Okay. I'm going to start erasing. And now I'm gonna add like a little block that we're gonna mimic the to kind of have an idea where the where the pictures are gonna be. So here's gonna be a picture right here, approximately right here. On the slides that I shared with you guys, I use a ratio of one to one point five. If you guys don't know what it is, you guys will kind of see it in action right now. You know, let's erase this guy. That was my bet. Cool. All right. Um. So you guys see the width as I move this. The width is moving from one point six to one point seven. So say I'm gonna do one point eight. Um. Let's do one point seven actually. Let's do one point seven. So that ratio that I gave you guys is the ratio that's usually used for photographing, uh, for landscape or portrait mode. Doesn't really matter. I use this ratio to actually have like the right proportions for the picture that's taken a lot of people don't really realize that but say i choose 1.7 on the width then the height is going to be longer so we do 1.7 times 1.5 so it's telling me that my height wise is supposed to be 2.55 so we'll do like in the middle of 2.5 so let's do it right there cool so that's going to be your perfect ratio for what the um photo the iPad is taking, or if you're using a DSLR, it still, it still applies. So we're just gonna duplicate these, boom, we're ready to go. And then we're gonna go ahead and add some text, I don't know, that we could put over. Um, Let me see. We're gonna put photo booth on a one. Gonna put it in. Some nicer school letters. Let's see what they got for school. 
cool look. Oh, they got school belt. Let's use that. Make them nice and big. Make it nice and bold. Boom, boom. Let's make it really big to make it pop. All right. Once again, if I'm moving too fast, guys, feel free to stop me. There's no such thing as dumb questions. I know that's what we were told in school. And I, I promise you guys, I'm not going to make fun of you guys. I actually want you guys to learn. So, all right. I think it's good right there. All right. We got our template real quick. All right. Now, I want these pencils to go over because that's how we want our... Uh, is this about overlay? Yes. Someone asking a question? I don't even know what that means. Someone left. Got it. Okay. Y'all still with me, though? Everybody still here? Yep. So far, so yeah. good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was on mute myself. I'm mute. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. Cool. All right. All right. Um. And we're gonna layer this to the top. So I'm bringing bringing stuff to the to the front, so you guys could layer over these squares right here. And what I like doing is there's a couple of ways to go about this. Um, but I'll show you guys my favorite way. But as you should, as we can refer to the slides, we should probably be on slide adding an overlay on the slides. We're gonna be able to um. Or hold up, where are we at? Yeah, adding an overlay. So pretty much what we're gonna do is duplicate this and then delete the stuff that we wanna we want uh the overlay to be over. So check it out, guys. So this is gonna be a one that we're not gonna mess with. And then this one, we're gonna we want this guy, the photo booth one thing, and this to be in the front. Also, I want to change the color of that because it's not really gonna pop. I don't know what that sound means. Someone keeps making a sound. I don't know if they they're asking a question or someone's leaving. Okay. That's someone coming in to the room. It's oh, like okay. a doorbell. It's like a gotcha. doorbell. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that means. I think Andre went out and then he just came back. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So we want this photo booth 101, these, these pencils, and this to go over these pictures. Okay. So that means that we delete any everything but that. So we're just going to start deleting stuff. And we can delete that. Now, see how that photo booth 101 letter went away? What I like to do so we could see it is change the background color of that. Let's change the background color to something red. Doesn't matter. I'll explain why. This red, we're not going to see it because it's going to be a transparent background anyways. All right. So now we got this and now we got that. So now we're ready to apply this template, a normal template, to 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 Luma booth. So you guys have downloaded however you guys want. Um, my, my preferred way is I like to download it. So I go to share. Super important guys, when you guys here to go to download. It's PNG, that's what I like using. That's what Luma likes. Don't mess with this, this, this pixel size right here. I know sometimes when we learn the bigger the pixels, the more quality it's gonna be, yeah. But since we already set the dimensions to six by four, this is what it's gonna give you. This is this is what the dimensions are in pixels. So please don't mess with these. Don't 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 touch this. Um, and we're just gonna download this one. So we're just gonna download it. And you put done. And click download. And I'm not really gonna download it right now, but I would click download. And like I said, my preferred method is I like to download into my device, which I like doing this on my laptop. And then I like emailing it to myself. And when I email it to myself, I go on my iPad, I download it on my iPad, and then apply it to Luma Booth. So that's how I get it. I know some people like airdropping it if they're using like a like a i like a MacBook and they'll airdrop it to their to their iPad. Oh, there's a lot of ways. Some people like putting it on a cloud and then just using the cloud for both devices. So there's many ways. There's no right or wrong way, but that's just my preferred method. Cool. So now we, we have this part on our, on our device. Now we need this part. This is going to be the overlay part, right? So 
what we're going to do is also download this one, but this is the important one that we got to learn. We could click download. Once again, don't mess with this. Don't touch it. We're going to put transparent background. Don't forget to click that transparent background. So what does transparent background do is you see this red that we chose as the color of the background. It's going to make it transparent. So it's not going to, it's not going to have a color. It's going to be see-through. So that's what we want because we're going to have these pencils, this photo booth 101 logo or, or words and these and pencils as well over our actual template and over the pictures from the booth. So that's where we go. We go download, transparent. Please, please don't forget to use transparent background and don't mess with this. And then we're just going to download the actual one, which is page two. And once again, we click download and then transfer it. Once you download it, transfer it to your device, however you guys want. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way. And we're going to apply it to the, uh, to the to Luma booth. So let's go back to the slides. Hans, I have a question. Yeah. On your page two, the photo booth is in white, but on page one, it's in black. Are they duplicates yeah, of each other? Yeah, I, I, yeah, let me change that. That was a little confusing. Let's, let's change it to white, just so it pops out. There we go. Yeah, no, that's because I did it to this one and I didn't do it to that one. But yeah, um, we're, we're it's gonna be in white when we put it to our to our thing. So I'll play it for you guys. Um, let's pretend that we already did the template. Um, so we're gonna play this one. All right, guys, let's get right to it. All right, so we're at the print layout page on Luma Booth. From right here, you're gonna add an image. You're going to go ahead and add your template. Now we're going to choose. For this example, I, I went ahead and uh, used a different logo, um, Photo Booth 101, but it's still the same, same gist. It's, 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 you know, words over the, over over the picture. Booth. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a quick lesson. Um, we're just going to guesstimate right now when you guys are actually doing this for your event. Yeah, be a little mindful and make it look nice and crisp. But for right now, I'm just gonna eyeball it. From right here, I usually just add on the wood. But let's just add 22 most likely. Let's do 26. So right here, I'm trying to cover all the black while I'm messing with this part right here. The 526 and the height, you'll see I'm messing with the height as well. Um, so I'm trying to cover all the black so um, you can't see it. Those are pretty much my landmarks. That's good enough. Like I said, this one doesn't have to be perfect right now. It's probably going to be like 88. A little more. Okay, 94. All right, so I'm just trying to cover the black stuff where the, where the images were supposed to. All right, now that I said that... Um, Pay attention uh, at the very bottom of the of the numbers that I mess with. Um, pay attention to the Y. Um, you should see 116 on your screen. Um, that's the Y coordinate. So the X coordinate is going to be the one moving uh, left and right. And the Y coordinate is going to stay stagnant. We want to memorize one, 116 or we're going to use that 116 for all three photos from Booth. So they all, all align, you know, at the same height. You'll see what I mean right now. What's the goal? All right, I'm going to turn this into photo one. And right from right here, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm also going to take note of the height uh, on the on the bottom numbers, Y116. So I know that this next one, Y, y has to be a 116. has to be the same. And duplicate it. Just kind of eyeball it. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect right now. I'm going to turn this into 116. I'm going to go ahead. That's going to be photo two. Duplicate it. Right there. It's not perfectly even, not perfectly spaced, but we're not too worried about it. This is just an example. This was an actual event. We would actually take time doing this. All right, now that we got this set up, now we're going to add image again. And now we're going to add the actual overlay 
So now what I'm doing here is going back and now adding the overlay, the one that I use for transparent background. Um, so remember the background on this one is see-through. So it's gonna go over the pictures now. And it's gonna go over the pictures. You're gonna see as soon as we click this, that overlay now is over the picture. Did you guys see the PBU 101 go over the pictures now? The pencils didn't go over the pictures, but uh, I, I could have done it. I did it on the example that I'm doing for you guys right now. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, on that one, I missed the mark. I should have put the pencils over it, but There's, you know, it's the same gist, guys. That. And you guys are ready to go. Yeah, it's just launch the event. Boom. There we go. Good example. Let's skip this part. Now it's just taking pictures. I don't want to waste you guys' time. Cool. And now we're going to go and see the end result. You see that, now, guys? Now we see the PBU 101 goes over the pictures. And your guests are going to be like, that's pretty your freaking overlay, cool. Overlay, that PBU sign is over the pictures, but still transparent. And you can still see. Boom. All right. So that's the overlay on that. Uh, now let's create an overlay for GIFs. So um, do you guys use GIFs at all? If not, you guys should give it a try. Yes, I do. Yeah. Have you, have you done an overlay for a GIF? Um, you did it for me, but yes. <laughs> man, I'm about to show you and then you're not going to pay me no more, man. <laughs> No, so it's probably I'm about to work my way up to that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good, man. So let's do a um a gift now. So on on your on your Luma Booth software, it's gonna tell you what size the GIF has to be. So if we go to Luma Booth, I'm just going to Luma Booth right now. You guys probably can't see me going on it, but I'll just uh speak as I'm navigating my my uh, iPhone, because that's what I'm using for Luma with right now. And I'm going to go to uh, capture settings on the capture settings menu on Luma booth. You guys will, and like I said, this is being recorded. So you guys will be able to watch this later, but in the capture settings menu, we're going to go down on a GIF and depending how your, um, your device is rotated, it's going to tell you what size dimension in pixels your overlay has to be. So say we're going to do this upright. So this square is going to be upright and your iPad at your event is going to be upright. Then while you're navigating the capture settings menu, you want to have your iPad rotated the right way. So it tells you which one, because if you guys lay it down and use it a pro trade mode, those numbers will change and it's going to look funky or it's probably not even going to take it. So make sure that your iPad is rotated the right way, how it's going to be at the event before you guys look at what the what what the measurements are. Any questions on that? No? All right. So right now I'm looking at my capture settings part and it's telling me that I need a template for this portrait mode at 720 pixels by 960. So we're gonna go ahead and start a new one, custom size. And now we're not gonna put it in inches anymore, right? Because now Luma Booth is telling us hey, we're not going to use inches, we're going to use pixels. So we're going to stay at pixels. And it wants the width at 720. And it wants its height at 960. This is for the device I'm using, guys. Check your device. Make sure that you guys got the right one. Because I have seen a change from iPad to iPad. Sometimes my iPhone tells me different things. So just please, please, please check. Create new design. All right. And now we're going to do a, a GIF out of the template that we already made, right? So, Andre, this is how I did the GIF for you. You're going to be, we're going to use the template that we've already used. So, we're going to go back to here. No, that's the wrong one. This one. And we'll use this template right here. Give my, give my laptop some time to uh, load real quick. There we go. It's struggling. All right, so we're gonna copy everything just for now. And then we'll erase things that we need to erase. I'm gonna paste. More than that. 
Mm, guess not. All right, well, we'll do the old school way. Click this. I'm going to hold down shift, click that, and click that because I want that as well. I'm going to copy that. I want to paste it as well. Cool. You know what? Just to make my life easier, I'm going to go ahead and add a page and I'm going to bring this to the bottom for now just to put them on the side. I'll bring them up later. You'll, you'll guys will see what I'm doing right now. I'm going to do this and I'm going to detach image from background. I don't want this to be in the background anymore. I'm going to make it a border. Um, so what we're going to do, I don't like that back to school thing. Let's, let's, let's phase it out of it. I'm going to make a border out of this. There we go. Now I can make a border. So we're going to leave it right there. And we're going to duplicate this three more times because this rectangle has four borders, right? So we're going to plug for total four. We're going to duplicate it. One, two, three. Did it duplicate the last one? I think it did. All right. We'll figure it out right now. So we're going to make it a border. Boom. There's a border right there. Border right there. Uh, it didn't duplicate it enough times. Let me go back. Let me duplicate it a couple more times. One, two. I want them to align. You want them to align perfectly with each other so the border looks nice and clean. This smaller. Bring it back up. Now we got a border. Cool, right? And now we're going to use these guys right here. Bring them up. Gonna mess with it a little bit. Gonna mess with it a little bit. Like I said, this is an example. Let's make it pop somehow. Yeah, that's good right there. Cool. So now, when pick well, when customers uh, take a picture, their picture is going to be the, the the what's inside in white, and these borders are going to be around their picture. So it looks super cool in gifts. Um, same thing applies to boomerang. It's just going to be a different um different dimension. So if you guys need to, to get the dimensions, you also go, you'll also go to capture settings, and I'm navigating it right now as you guys could hear me, and I'll tell you guys. So for image overlays for boomerang, it's asking for 720 pixels by 1,280. So say I wanted to do one for boomerang as well, I would definitely do the same thing, except the custom size is gonna be 720 by 1280. But right now we're just doing GIF. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and download this. Um, and this is an overlay guys, which is not a regular template anymore. So we're just going to download this. And we're going to make it a transparent background. Again, don't mess with this. 720 by 960. That's what you want. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. But also, don't forget to put transparent background for your overlays. Transparent. Super important. You need Canva Pro for this. The, just an FYI, guys. But um, Canva Pro is so worth it for it a lot of other things that I'm going to show you guys later on in this lesson. But we're going to go ahead and download it. Like I said, you guys have your own preference on how to take it from um, your, your laptop or whatever you made your template to your iPad. So now we're going to go ahead and play this next video that's going to explain how to apply it to your GIF. Um, so we're going to share. share. All right, guys, let's get right to it. So we already watched that one. Can you guys watch this next video right here? You guys can see it? Yes. All right, cool. Just a quick tip, guys. If you guys are also wanting to make an overlay for your GIFs, GIFs, whatever you want to call them, GIF, um, on capture settings, you're going to... So here's the capture settings menu that I was talking about to you guys. Here's the dimensions where you're going gonna, gonna to find it for whatever your device needs. Uh, most, of, most of the devices are, are similar or the same. 
but yeah, always just double check right here. See right this number right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it says 720 pixels by height of 960 pixels. All right. So when you're making a template on Canva, it let by the way, I'm mean, skipping this part. Um I I think I forgot to mention when once we have the overlay, you're gonna click click choose and choose, and then you go to the overlay that you made and uh, apply that template that we just made right now. Let's you choose the exact measurements and pixels if that's what you need. Uh, make sure you choose that. If, if you don't make those measurements exactly the same, then uh, Luma Booth is gonna reject it. Same thing for Boomerang, guys. It's gonna tell you the measurements right here. 720 pixels by 1280 pixels. Make sure you pay attention to that. And check it out, guys. Can you guys rotate it? Now we're, now we're in landscape mode these numbers switch so if you guys are using uh, landscape mode make sure you pay attention to that because these numbers will switch all right guys cool so that's what i was referring to you guys to have your ipad rotated the correct way or if you're using an iphone for boomerang for uh, your 360 video make sure it's rotated however you're going to use it because it will make a difference, guys. All right, cool. What slide are we on? Like, again, I'm moving fast just because I don't want to waste your guys' time, but also please stop me if you guys have questions. Um, you guys need a recap on anything right now? No? All right. No. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we did the overlay. We already did a transparent. The Luma boomerang. Cool. Um, I think I have an example of an overlay. Let's move to the next slide. Move to the next slide. So I went over this. <clears throat> we need an overlay. Um, there's a video that I shared um on on the chat. Um, if you guys want to look at it, it should be a link called photoshare.co. That's something blah blah blah. But uh, you'll be able to see how the video looks like with a with an example that I did for a 360 slash boomerang. It's still the same type of overlay. Um, you guys could see it. It's some girl sitting on a platform. She looks super cool, and the border of the casino theme that I made for them. Everybody loved it. So just uh, that's how you guys could step up your game um, to make borders for overlays. Cool. Now we're going to get to the new part of this lesson that the last time people didn't um, get to see. Um, time for an AI backdrop. So uh, you guys, are you guys able to see the slide? Yes. Yes, we are. All right, cool. So let's read it over real quick, um, just because this is my first time teaching this part of the class. So let's say an AI backdrop is, uh, for me, AI backdrops have become really easy. Uh, add-on. So AI backdrop has easily become my favorite add-on as it has helped me up with my pickups. Let's see how easy it is to do an AI backdrop. So um, just so you guys know, I do do pickups now um, with the mentorship of Drew. So I really wanted to show you guys this pretty cool feature. So can uh, we're going to be on Canva now. But on this... Uh, on your slides, it pretty much tells you to go look up under background removal on the settings. Um, it's gonna tell you what size and pixels you guys are gonna need for a background removal. Um, so right now I'm on my iPhone you guys can't see that, but it's asking me that I need for this background removal, I'm gonna need the size of 3,024 in width. 3,024 and width. And we're going to need a height of 4,032. And these are all in pixels. So we're going to create a new design. All right. So Canvas loading it up. Make my new design. <clears throat> I'm excited to show you guys this part because uh, it's a little more advanced just because it, it, it I'm going to show off a little duotone that um 
that uh, Canva allows. So for this recent example, I literally had a customer that wanted a AI backdrop with the hearts uh, in the background. I don't know if you guys remember like the the nineties and the early two thousands. Um, girls would love that background with the, like the hearts in the background. It's like that like chola look. I don't know if you guys reckon, uh, remember that? But oh she, yeah, yeah. Okay, there. I remember a lot too. So um, she asked for that. So I went online and I looked up uh some some uh some AI backdrops. I mean some some backdrops, and I got this one right here. Right. And this one was like already Walmart watermarked. So you guys could definitely use this one and uh, take out this watermark. Um, I'll show you guys how. But don't tell them that I did it. And what did you search to, to find those? Because those are cool. They're nostalgic. Yeah. yeah. So all I put, I do, I, it's going to sound bad. Damn, Drew's going to edit this out of watch. <laughs> I put a heart backdrop chola and uh, it came out with this. So um that's how i found it uh there's i just used keywords if you guys know how to use um google google loves keywords so i don't always go like 90s backdrops from blah 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 i just i get i put keywords and uh that's how i found it but yeah so let's try to erase this this part right here this um this watermark because i didn't buy it so we're gonna do this and we're gonna bring this down until it kind of aligns no. So was that just on Canva Pro? Like, so why does it have the? Um, it wasn't on watermark? Canva. I found it on Google. Oh, on Google. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's watermark because I needed to buy it, but I was being cheap and I didn't buy it. But no worries. Look, I'm already kind of erasing it already. I'm just trying to figure out where it aligns. I think it aligns great right there. And uh, let's do another one. You guys could definitely buy it. I mean, if you guys don't want to spend time doing this, you guys could definitely buy it. But I like to save money sometimes. But because I like to save money. Free is better. Yeah. Because I like to save money, I have to spend time doing this part right here. No, go back. Um. Man, this navigation bar that you guys can't see on my screen really, really messes with my with my clicking. Because I have to navigate around this. Oh my god, why does it keep doing that? Well, you guys get the gist. I'm doing it and because I don't want to waste your guys' time, but I'm doing this part right here. It's going to be around there. But I eventually, I kept on messing with this until I got something like this, watch. So I kept on messing with how I'm showing you guys. Hopefully Drew edits this part out. And then I got it to look like this. Boom, right? I finally was able to edit. And now the watermark's on. And the customer asked me, I don't want it red. I wanted a different color. Have you guys ever used Duotone here? Any of you, any of you with Duotone from Canva? No. I, no. You have? Okay, so one person. So this is what I wanted to show you guys because this is super exciting, like for me, at least, when I figured this out. So uh, this is what I found. This is the highest definition I was able to find, and I was able to, you know, edit it so it didn't have the watermark anymore. But it was only in red. My customer said, I want different colors. As you guys could see on my screen, she asked me for blue. She she asked me for baby blue, which it's not here anymore. But she asked me for a bunch of different colors. I said, fine, let me figure it out. And I already knew how to figure it out. You're going to go click on the image and you're going to edit image. And it's going to come up with a bunch of editing tools right now. If my computer stops lagging. I have so many things open. All right, and here's Duotone, guys. So this is how we are able to mess with colors here. We're going to choose Duotone. And you guys could choose preset ones. So look, mustard, sea green. But what I like using is custom. Because from here, you could you choose your shadows, your highlights, and you just mess with it. So say she told me she wanted something like baby blue. 
so boom and then with this one you kind of make it pop however you want choose a color and uh say she liked that or say she explained something like that that's what she wanted i'll go ahead and save this and send it to her and see what do you like about this one she ended up choosing i believe she ended up choosing this one because her, her template was like black and gold so I, I tried something like this it's actually not a gold it's like black and yellow but i mean that was the closest thing because you can't really make gold but she ended up choosing this because her template was black and gold. So that's something that you guys could use um, for AI backdrops and using du duotones. If you guys need to mess around with things, um, it really, really makes editing a lot easier. You guys are more flexible. You guys could tell your customers that, yeah, I could definitely do that. Um, it's great when you guys want to uh, pop, make a, a logo pop. So say, say this one right here um photo booth 101 that's uh and we're unlucky and they're they want a black background right they told us we want to want a black background um let me background remover on this one we want a black background and the photo booth 101 uh, logo is not popping out. It's like, it doesn't pop. So what we could do is edit image, go to Duotone. I love this, doing this with logos just because it's it's great to be able to um, make, a, make logos pop. You saw that, it popped right away. Just by editing on Duotone, it will save you guys so much time Instead, of, I, I had one person at the last class says that she read the she read the whole logo for them because she didn't know that Duotone existed. So instead of redoing the whole logo for them, this is what something you guys could do, um, especially if you want a brand. <clears throat> Duotone is great, but yeah, I got off topic just because I wanted you guys to really, really see the power of Duotone. But yeah, um, that's AI backdrop. Once once we uh, let's go back. Once we have the right AI backdrop. Boom, 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 boom. And that's really underrated, Hans. Like that really makes the possibilities endless for the backdrops that you can offer your customers. It really does. It really does. Um, like I said, she kept on asking for different questions. I had a baby blue one for her too. I, I don't see it here, but like I downloaded them all and uh I just showed her a bunch of different ones and what it took me like 30 seconds. It's only taking me longer because I'm teaching you guys, but it literally took me like 30 seconds. So she's like, Oh my god, I hope you don't mind. I actually want to see it in this one now. And I want to see it in this one. I was like, that's fine. It's taking me like 30 seconds. And I think I showed her like a total of like seven different ones until she like chose one. But yeah, so now we got an AI backdrop. This one we just share as a regular PNG download. Um, so don't put transparent background because we're not doing an overlay anymore. You go here, just download it, download it into your device, then go on your background removal on Luma Booth. Uh, on the menu and under uh, AI background removal, um, you just put the little plus sign and you add it as a background image and you will have this little hearts or whatever else you guys wanna make as an AI background. I know um, Monse at the masterclass, she literally went to templates right here. Well, let me see if I can do it. Designs and we'll, we're gonna put tropical or let's put beach. Say that someone wants it. Um, let's do this one. This is going to be our AI background now. So just let it load. Let let Canva do its thing. So say someone wants a really cool backdrop, but you know you don't have this. You guys could use an AI backdrop, and now this could be the the green screen backdrop, pretty much. So that your your customers will be in front of the beach. <clears throat> so if they step backwards, like step back or forward, will they be in or out of the picture since it's AI? Since yeah. It's so screen? if you guys look at the slides, um, I talk about it on the on the time for AI backdrop slide at the very bottom. Let's read the let's read the tips. 
So please advise your guests about a few things, including AI is made for recognizing human faces, not pets. So what does that mean? Sometimes Aunt Susie wants to take a picture with her dog, right? Guess what? The AI backdrop is not really made for pets. So while she's like carrying her up and he's on camera, he's going to be cut out and they're going to, it's going to show the backdrop and it's not going to show the dog. Sometimes it will, sometimes it doesn't, but the AI backdrop is made for human faces. So just let them know that. Um, and I like, I like setting limits and expectations just so it's, uh, it's better for them, you know? All right. What's the next tip? Um, do not, uh, advise guests to not use face props when using an AI backdrop that falls again under using, uh, you know, human recognition It's trying to recognize human faces. So when you put on a Hulk mask or uh, Hulk mask, I guess kind of looks human, but if you put on some like clown mask, that's like really scary, um, for like a Halloween prop, it's not really going to read it. And it's, it will sometimes, uh, crop them up and, uh, pretty much you'll see through them and you'll see the backdrop. What's another one? Advise customers to use a, a solid background, such as a white or black wall. So what does this mean? Uh, you always want your, well, not always, but you usually want your back, your, your booth to be facing a wall that's a solid color. Um, I like using like a black uh, wall if they have one or a white, just a solid color. So it can be, this, this wall can be different colors and they can be anything behind it. So yeah, you guys could open it to like an open space. Like if you guys are just in a hall and they don't really have a wall that you could face, it will work. It just, it won't work as well. So if you guys could face it to a wall with a solid color, it's going to do so much better. And now the question was, if the customer steps back and forth, apply the same rule that you would apply to like a regular photo booth where with our iPad photo booths, the golden rule was four to five feet away from the, from the, from the photo booth. Same thing applies here. Don't, you know, don't give your customers, you know, 10 feet of room where they could sit like or, or stand 10 feet away from the booth because it's going to struggle. The AI is going to struggle. It struggles uh, constantly. You'll always see it like mess up like three or four pictures out of like a hundred. But I mean, I mean, 96% rate, I'll take it. You know, it's not that bad. Um, and if you do set expectations for your customers where you tell them, hey, this is the capabilities and these are the limits of the AI backdrop, they're not going to be upset. But if you promise them the world, you know, they're going to get upset. So please, please, if you guys are going to use AI backdrops, pay attention to the bottom uh, part of that slide for AI backdrop, just so they know like, okay, cool. At least you're telling them ahead of time. So they know like what to expect. And the last part of that is just try not to use it in an open area where people walk behind. So like I said, try to use it facing a solid wall. All right, guys, now is something that I didn't tell you guys I was going to teach you guys, but I really wanted to teach you guys because I think it's super cool and I don't want to keep it to myself, is we're going to use how to use uh, Magic Grab for Magic Grab text, Magic Grab uh, items, and Magic Grab. Uh, oh, and uh, Magic like Extender. So this is recently an a, a invitation that I was sent by my customer. It's, it's June 2nd right now. Look at the invitation. It was June 1st. So I did a template for her out of this. She's like, I want a template made out of this right here. Have you guys ever used a magic uh, magic graph for text or magic graph for items? Anyone here done that? No, Larry McClamp. Nope, I haven't. All right. Well, you guys are about to learn something super, 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 super cool. So, so what we did, what I did right now is click on the image, right? And then I went to edit image. And then these are the option, uh, the, the options that you have for magic stuff, right? So we did Duotone earlier, right? This is another cool thing that uh, Canva offers you guys. We're going to put grab text. So we're going to grab text. And it's going to recognize all the texts on your template. And it's going to allow you to grab them. So let's choose what we want to grab. Um, we're gonna grab all of them. We're gonna grab this, we're gonna grab that, and we're gonna grab this. And we're gonna grab it. So now Canva's doing its own thing. It's recognizing what you wanna grab. 
and it's loading. Just give it time. I really want you guys to learn this. There's a two reasons why I want you guys to learn this. First reason, I don't really like guessing what the, the, the customer's font is. So check it out. They didn't tell me what font it is, but because I was able to grab the, the, the font, it is now telling me this bar really gets in the way. Canva was able to recognize that the font was Brittany. Sure, I didn't know that, but they made it super easy for me. Have you guys ever gotten an invitation from your... And look, it didn't get the 21st birthday right. It put something else, list or something. Uh, so you guys want to check that it also recognized the right text. But have you guys ever gotten like a template from a customer from like an invitation with like a bunch of font and you don't even know what font it is? Like, dude, I don't know what font that is. And they're like, yeah, we don't know either. Just figure it out. This is an easy way to figure it out. They grabbed it and it straight up just said, oh, it's Brittany. We, we recognize it. Perfect. Now, an in instance that um, they give you a template with font that's not recognizable, most likely Canva doesn't have it. So in this huge list of, I don't know how many fonts they have. I mean, they have so many. It's super cool. But in this huge list, say they don't have it. What I like doing, and it's on the, on the, on the last slide that I'm talking to you guys. I like using um, what the font is the app that I like to do. And you'll take a picture of the font. And it'll, and it'll give you similar uh, fonts that look like what it's recognizing. And then I go to thefont.com and I go look up the, the font and it'll allow you to download it. And when you download it, uh, you put it on your files and then you go right here. Say you want to. And should be able to upload it somewhere. Why is it? Oh, because of the bar that you guys can't see. And right here, you see upload font at the bottom of my screen, uh, like on the bottom left. Are you guys able to see that? Can you guys see my cursor? Yes. Yeah. No. Yes, we can. So, so you would go right here, upload font. So let's walk through that again. Say Canva doesn't recognize it. You guys use the app that I like using. What the font? I'll recognize the font. Then you guys go to thefont.com. Download the font that you guys think looks similar or is the right one. And then once it's in your files, go to font and upload it right here. And these are fonts that I've grabbed before. Look, I'll say uploaded fonts. These are fonts that I've uploaded to my to my Canva before because customers gave me a font that you know Canva didn't offer, but I was able to recognize it with uh, the app, then download them. And it, it makes the customer super happy because you found either a similar font or the right font. But yeah, super cool. So now we're, we got the fonts separated. You see that it's separated everything. We're gonna use this later. So let's bring it down right now. Just so. We're gonna go ahead and erase this. And now Super excited to show you this part right here. We're, we're picking up apart this, this invitation, guys, because we're going to make it super cool for this customer. Now we're going to use Magic Expand, another cool thing that I like doing. And we're going to expand this to the left and to the right. So instead of me editing and making things myself, I'm going to tell canva to do it for me so now it's thinking now it's learning and it's gonna give me about four examples of like hey this is what we think would go with the expansion of this invitation so it's loading we'll just give it time it's not done yet just give it time I'm sorry, which, can you say again, how did you get to this point? What did you click on here? I put magic expand here. I'll, I'll go through it right again in a bit. But here, here's what it came up with. I don't know why it came up with this one. That's weird. This one, let's see. That one's decent. And that one looks weird right here. So this one looks pretty cool. 
I uh, like this one best. So let's use this one. And we'll click out of it. And now it expanded. So now instead of me editing it, Canva did it for me. So the question was, how did I get to this part right here? So the way I got to this part is I click on the image, right? So I clicked on the image. I went to edit image. I went to magic expand. And then I expanded these borders to where I needed them to be. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, it does. All right. Thank you. Yay, no problem. No, I want you guys to ask questions because I don't want you guys to be stuck later. And there we go. And now the last thing that I want to show you guys is this part right here. Watch. Edit image once again. And now instead of grab tags, we're going to grab items. So check it out. AI is working. It's trying to see what, what items it could grab. And it, of course, it found this one. And it found this one. And it found this one. And we're going to grab them. So now, once again, Canva's, you know, thinking. So it's going to do its thing. And what it's just doing right now is it's literally separating these. So I could grab them individually. Just let it load. Let Canva load. Look at that, guys. <laughs> I don't know. But the first time I found this, I was like, this is freaking cool, man. So now you guys could like, you know, move these around. And now let's, let's, let's just complete this template, right? Um, let's go to elements. We're going to add some, some pictures to it. Photo from booth. This is where we're going to do our landmarks. Right now, I'm going to eyeball it, guys. I'm not going to do the right ratio just because I don't want to prolong it. You guys already know how to get the right ratio. Um, boom. Maybe that was a little too big. Let's do it again. Uh, center it. You guys can do this. Align to page. We'll center this guy. Get this guy at the right height. Duplicate it one more time. All right. Cool. And look at this. If we wanted to, we could do what we learned and make this an overlay. Go to front because we know how to do overlays now. We could use her words, her 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 font that she gave us as overlays. Make it bigger. Let's do some effects on it. Just make it curve, make it pop. Boom. I just bar. Let's do the curvature a little less. That looks nice. Let's put this stuff that we put down here. Let's put it somewhere to the side, pretty and pink. And look at that. We made a template out of her invitation and it only took me a while just because I had to, you know, teach you guys and take my time. But I literally did this for her in probably five minutes. She was freaking shocked and she loved it. Um, it was a little different, obviously, because I, I did this from scrap, but it was very similar. But uh, yes, any questions on this? That's cool. I right. did get a, um, someone gave me their invitation and I was like, I just went forever trying to match the colors one mm -hmm. by one and all this kind of stuff. Man, where were you a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry I haven't uh, asked for you guys sooner, but uh, I no, hope that's cool. Yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot from it. There's a lot of other things that you guys can mess around with Canva. Please, 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 don't, you know, don't be afraid. Say you guys want, she wants 
these these things to like not pop as much. It's an eyesore. Sometimes people tell me it's an eyesore. Little like little things like this, like where you guys can mess with the transparency, makes it a little bit easier on the eye, you know. Um, it won't be transparent where like, you'll be able to see through it. Um, but you know, it helps. So just mess with things here and there, guys. Um, I do this on my spare time, just when I get bored, some people read. Um, <laughs> I'm not a big reader, I don't like reading books. So what I do is just hop on the computer and I was like, what can I learn today to make my business way better than everybody else's? And now I'm sharing these secrets with you guys, just because I want you guys to succeed. So if you guys have any questions, this is pretty much the end of this um, class. Um, if you guys have any questions, please, please let me know. Um, if you guys want me to, you know, go back and and uh, re-explain something. Um, I have a, I have, a, I have two questions actually. Um, this, do you find that people like when the picture has a uh, when the overlay is like on top of the picture? You know, like how these are. If the person picture was behind there, the glasses look like they're on top of them a mm -hmm. little bit. Do you find that those are your best, uh, you know, responses or people like those the best? Versus just like maybe along the bottom. So. Yeah, so say that you wanted to do along the bottom and not really over them like that. Yeah. 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 Um, every I like them on top of them, but what do you usually? Every customer is different. So what I like doing, especially after you guys get like a, like a couple of templates under your belt, um, what I like doing is making a file of all my templates that I've done before, obviously without their pictures, like the customer's pictures. So they literally look like how we're looking at it right now. And I have it all in a folder. And I'll send all these templates to the customer. Just send them all. And they will be like, I like this one. I don't like this one. And then what you could do is just tell them, well, what do you like about this one? And why don't you like this one? And then that will answer your question. Like, oh, maybe she she does. They don't they don't know that the word overlay, right? We know the word overlay. We're in the business. They don't. They'll just tell you, I don't like that the, these glasses are over my picture. So then be like, okay, well, she doesn't like overlay. So as 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 you get like belts under your belt, uh, templates under your belt, save them, put them all in a file, and then just blast them all to them. Um, I literally have a folder with like, I don't know, not fifty, but probably like forty templates that I custom made, and I just send them to them, and then they'll be able to tell me I like this one, I don't like this one, and I ask why. So if that answers your question, that that's that's how I go about it. And then uh, one final question. Um, I kind of asked this in the chat before. So you see the three, how you have the three yellow um, boxes. Mm -hmm. If you were doing a, if it was just going to be a single photo, mm -hmm. would the measurement be, what would the measurement be? So yeah, let's do it right now. So say, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to change the whole template. So let's say that you, you had your, your, um your, your photo booth laying down. They want a landscape, right? First, we're gonna eyeball it right now, right? We're gonna eyeball it. And I like, since since this is the long side from left to right is the long side and up and down is the short side. I like getting the short side first and it'll tell me how long it So let's say, let's say we want it like at 2.6, right? So remember the ratio, 2.6, right? So we're gonna do 2.6 times 1.5, 2.6 times 1.5, it's gonna be 3.9. So then this side has to be 3.9. Seems small, but you guys wanna keep that ratio if you want that, that, that perfect proportion that iPad's taking. So that would be your size right here. And obviously that's too small. So it's like, oh, that's too small. It's you know a lot of dead space. We'll then make it bigger. Let's go with three. Come on, save it three, and then then three times one point five. I believe from the top of my head is four point five, and there you go. But the ratio is one to one point five. So your short side, I like starting with my short side, with this side, and then since it's telling me it's three, then my long side is going to be one point five times that. Does that make sense? I know, I know sometimes math is not the strong point for people, but I hope that makes sense. <laughs> no, that's good. Thank you. That's what I needed. Thank yeah, you. So just keep that, that, that little ratio in your head, one to 1. 1.5, the short side, go with the short side, and then 1.5 for the long side. 
and you'll have the perfect ratio for the pictures. Thank you, because I found it some. Um, I've done some like corporate type events, and they don't they don't want to stand for three pictures. They just want to, you know, uh, one shot. They usually, it's called a repeat and step type of thing. What's that? Oh, it's sometimes it's usually one picture, and then they they want to. Uh, it's usually for like when when someone famous. So I had this with Lamar. Yeah. But right. they don't tell me that. But yeah. So yeah, yeah. I got I got what you're saying. Thank picture. you. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Let's keep the questions going. If you guys have some. No. Can you guys reach out to Canva and get a a deal for the subscription? <laughs> oh, that's that's a Drew question right there, man. I yeah. don't have that type of power, man. I don't have that type of power. I I just love their product, but yeah. Yeah, it's sweet. I've been putting off getting the Canva Pro, but I, I think it's time. Yeah, seeing all the stuff that you can do definitely makes it worth it. Yeah, it's you, well worth it. It's only twelve dollars. It's well worth it for everything you do. <laughs> I I literally for everything. All these things, like this edit image thing, like that was all Canva Pro. So I mean, if you guys just saw what it could do, the capabilities it has, man. Take advantage. But Follow me advice and, you know, I'm not telling you guys not to read a book, but maybe pick that, you know, that that next book that you guys have in your mind and just hop on Canva and mess with it, man. Have, mess with it and learn it because you're going to really be able to wow your 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 customers in the future if you guys really, really learn the software really well. It's good for your fly. Uh, Canva is good for flyers and uh, Every also uh, for, like if you post, if you have a Google profile, business profile mm -hmm. page, you can make your flyers and all. All that stuff too. Absolutely. It's worth it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but there was a lot of info here. And again, if you want to be part of the mentor group chat, we do calls like this every so often. Link to that will be down in the description. Again, if you want to sign up for Luma Booth, if you're a new user, you create an account using our link, you buy it for the year, it'll give you a small discount for $194.99 for the year. Once you do that, you email me at photobooth101 info at gmail.com. Let me know you signed up. We will get you the group chat for the software. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, subscribe. And if you want a photo booth, you want to get started in the business, go to photobooth101.com. We will take care of you. Thank you. God bless. See you soon.